I've cut all the panels and I've laid them out according to the way they're going to look in their frames. So you'll notice that I have one, two, and then three is in the end of the panel, four, five, and then six. Procedure four, we are going to glue and square these two pieces. Procedure five, we'll glue and square those pieces. So now I'm gonna take these two over and we'll glue them together. We're gonna use two pipe clamps underneath, crossing the two rails. That's all we need. Now let's talk a little bit about the theory of a frame and a panel. Very decorative, beautiful way of doing woodworking, but it has more to do with the, the practicality of this type of construction. Right? Wood expands and contracts this way, across the grain. And this particular panel could move as much as an eighth of an inch, according to the humidity. So when it's really humid and the air is full of water, this fills full of water and it expands. And then when it dries out, it shrinks. So, and it's constantly doing that. It doesn't expand and contract this way very much. So by limiting the width of a board and creating a frame, Right, so most of the distance is spanned by the grain going this direction. This stabilizes the perimeter so that it doesn't move. Inside, where we put this panel, it does move. So we trap it in this groove like this and it can expand and contract and not fall out. When we glue this, we don't make it tight. We leave a gap in there on purpose so that it can expand and contract. When we glue this together, we're only gonna glue the four joints, that's all. We do not glue around the panel on purpose. So let's do a dry fit. Uh, a word of warning before you glue this together, check and make sure all of your joinery is accurate and thoroughly cut. These all look like they are, but sometimes there's a flat spot where the shaper didn't get it quite cut and it doesn't round all the way over. If that's the case with your piece, go over and reshape it so that it does roll all the way around. This joint and this joint fit together like hand in glove. And if you have any flat spots or incorrectly cut joinery, it won't go together well. Okay, so start with this, your uh, left style, roll it up and put the top rail in. Now this is number three, I'm making sure it's right side up. and it folds in like that, right? So notice this gap right here, that may or may not be the case down below, but that's okay. It also should be less than where this rail goes to. If it's higher, if this is all the way down, that's all the way down, and this is higher than that, it's too long, and the other style won't fit. That just means you'll need to trim a little bit off on the table saw. If it's a sixteenth of an inch, you don't need to do anything else. If it's more than a sixteenth, you probably ought to reshape that end also to recut that cove. <laughs> okay, so on the plan, it says three and one eighth right there. That's the distance from the bottom of the foot to the lower part of the rail. So I'm gonna come up three and one eighth, make a mark. The same thing on this one. That's how I know where this is going to go to. So there 
it is. Well, you notice that I am using a mallet to put this thing together, not the butt of my hand. That leads to sore hands and broken bones. This is my dry fit, making sure everything goes together just the way I want it. You should always, always, always dry fit. Okay, that looks great. So I've got no gaps, nice and tight. If yours has gaps, usually that means something is wrong and you gotta figure out what it is. Could be that your panel's too long, could be that your joinery is bad, could be that you have a crumb in there, something that's not allowing it to come together. Make sure all four corners are nice and, nice and good. I also wanna check it for square. To do that, I measure here, 18 and an eighth. That should match up here, 18 and an eighth. Length, 20 and a fourth, 20 and a fourth. And now the diagonals are the kicker. 28 and one eighth, oops, 27 and one eighth. 27 and just over one eighth. Our tolerance here is one sixteenth of an inch. If it's more than a 16th, we need to adjust. And in this case, it's about a 32nd out, which is fine. Okay, so let's say that one side measures more than the other by an eighth of an inch, a fourth of an inch. That means that generally your panel is parallel like this, parallelogram. And we have to just fix it. Let me see if I can throw it out of square on purpose. So now this is 27 and 3 eighths, 27. That's 3 eighths out of square. And it means it's going like this because this is longer. So I just need to tap on that corner and bring it back in. Twenty-seven and three sixteenths, twenty-seven and almost three sixteenths. So that does it. Okay. Now we know what we're doing. Now let's glue it. Pull that out. Pull that off. Pull, pull that off. I don't even know that we need to move the panel glue and you're going to need a brush which are kept right here in water pull the water out of the brush at least most of it so you don't dilute your glue now watch how i apply i'm going to spread the glue everywhere with my brush but keep it back one half of an inch about there because when I put this together in the joint it's going to squeeze out and it's going to squeeze a little bit that way and fill this up if it's too close it'll spread and get on to my panel and I don't want to do that I want to leave that able to float if I get glue on there it'll want to freeze it more time on this side half inch back fully coat everywhere else there's a lot of wood we're holding together with very little glue some excess so that's what it looks like Come
get their projects. Other side. Hit my mark. So I've got it in. Clamp it tight. Look at my squeeze out. I've got squeeze out here and on the bottom, which is great. Back side. But I don't have any squeeze out here. That's good. Now, if you do have squeeze out here, that means we're locking in our panel, which is not a good thing. To fix that, however, you'll probably break it if you try to take it apart. This glue just freezes it so quickly. So what you wanna do is just pull it out of there with a six inch rule or a putty knife and just pull it out nice and easy. Don't take a rag and smear it in there. You'll just smear all the glue that's on this rag all throughout your panel. That's a bad idea. So just nice and easy, reach in and grab it and pull it out. Okay, now the outside of this is all gonna be sanded the surface. So this isn't a problem. It's inside where sanding is very difficult. Bottom, I'm gonna clean that up. That's not gonna be seen. There. Let's make sure our name is on it. Our period and 15 minutes from now would be 9.45. Flip it over. Get the glue off of there. on my next one.